morning this is kasturi day today again i am come to discuss the sound chapter according to icc syllabus class 8 okay so uh, uh, in my uh, last video uh, regarding this sound i had started this uh, sound chapter so now uh, i'll start with the uses of ultrasonic vibrations in industry uh, this ultrasonic vibrations uh, is used for homogeneous milk that is uh, milk is agitated uh, by the vibrations which the by these ultrasonic vibrations to break down the larger particles of the fat which are present in the milk into smaller particles okay so that uh, it becomes homogeneous the milk becomes homogeneous then in uh, dish wash machines these ultrasonic vibrations are used in this what happens we put some water and detergent as vibrant with the ultrasonic and they uh, vibrant uh, 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 they uh, move along with the ultrasonic vibrations okay the vibrating detergent particles rub against the dirty dirty plates and clean them okay then uh, these ultrasonic vibrations are used to drive away the rats and cockroaches from the go downs as these vibrations produce a sort of depression in them and they move away for uh, this ultrasonic vibrations we know that uh, they, these are used for imaging internal organs of the human body by you we know that uh, there is some uh, term which is used in medical uh, that means uh, in medical uh, terms that is uh, ultrasonic uh, uh, ultrasound uh, usg you can say okay so that is what that uh, in this the ultrasonic vibrations are used to image the internal organs of the human body and then uh, this ultrasonic vibrations are also used in relieving pain in the joints and muscles okay like uh, see from the picture uh, the last one there is a uh, uh, therapy machine which is used which uh, which uh, produces some ultrasonic vibrations which are uh, rubbed around the knee see the red color knee okay where it is being rubbed to relieve the pain in the joints of the knee okay next to we come to uh, the uses of ultrasonic vibrations by animals the upper limit of the audible frequency in case of dogs is 40000 hertz we know that our upper limit is 20000 hertz but in case of dogs it is 40000 hertz so dogs can spe can be specially trained to respond to a whistle that is known as galton whistle whistle which produces this ultrasonic vibrations which cannot be heard by the humans and by uh, when the humans uh, produce uh, use this galton whistle they can train the dogs accordingly okay uh, bats can produce the vibrations this ultrasonic vibrations in the frequency range of 50 uh, hertz to 80000 hertz okay and they can they actually they have a very weak eyesight so and uh, uh, during the night only they uh, uh, generally fly around so, so what happens then uh, these bats cannot see uh and so what happens they produce the sound to catch their prey to catch the insects to understand when these vibrations strike an object and uh, reflect uh, back to it that uh, time he, he understand that there is a some object uh, which is nearby it may be their prey so to locate their prey these uh, ultrasonic sounds are used by the bats then dolphins also use these sounds to locate their prey okay see like this the from the picture you can see the uh, dolphin uh, uh, produces this ultrasonic sound, sound uh, vibrations to uh, see their uh, to locate their prey okay next to we come to reflection and absorption of sound reflection of sound what is reflection of sound that is the phenomena due to which the sound energy on striking some hard object bounces back in some uh, other direction it is called reflection of sound okay see from the picture it uh, the uh, stopwatch produces a sound which hits the uh, wooden board and 
uh, passes from the uh, it reflects uh, back from the wooden board to the human ear in another direction so this is called reflection of sound then absorption of sound shining objects like mirror metals or hard objects like buildings and stones they reflect sound okay but the substances the objects which are of loose texture texture that is curtains gunny bags straws carpets they absorb sound for that reason big cinema halls and auditoriums they are carpeted and their walls are coated with some rough material so that these uh, sounds can be absorbed and there is no echo formed inside the hall now for the same reason sound rec uh, uh, recording studios they are also made soundproof okay but in ordinary room where we live the distance between the sound and its reflecting surface is very uh, it's, uh, it's it's it is seldom 17 meters okay it's uh, it's not not even 17 meters uh, generally it is not even 17 meters or more or wide and, uh, and the original sound and the reflected sound reaches the ear within almost at the same time so no echo is formed in a living room where uh, in in our in a ordinary room which where we live in okay that's why no echo is formed inside these rooms so to hear an echo uh, there should be the distance from the source of the sound and the reflecting body the distance should be 17 meters and the uh, uh, this uh, time taken that is from the source uh, going uh, to the hard object or the to the reflecting body and then coming back to the human ear that should be uh, a, 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 one tenth of a second okay so that minimum two things should be there to hear an echo now uh, there should uh, another thing is that there should be a reflecting object okay that is high rise building or hill should be there to form an echo uh, minimum distance i told you 17 meters then loudness of the sound should be sufficient so that it can be heard after reflection okay therefore the repetition of sound so what is an echo it is the repetition of sound which is reflected from a high building or any such object and it is known therefore the, that is known as echo okay then human ear can hear two sounds separately only if the ear they reach the ear after an interval of one tenth of a second the average speed of sound is 332 meter per second thus in in one tenth of a second the sound will travel a distance of 332 meter per second into one tenth of a second that is 332.2 meters the distance will be 332.2 meters sound going from the source to the reflecting object and then coming back to the human ear that uh, distance total distance is 333.2 meters then this means if a sound starts from a point after reflecting from a hard object comes back to the same point okay so the distance between the reflecting body and the source of the sound should be 33.2 uh, divided by 2 that is 16.6 or 17 meters approx this hearing of a reflected sound from a reflecting body is called an echo okay now what is sonar Sonar is a device which is fitted in a ship to find the depth of the sea. Okay, based on the principle of reflection of sound. This is the principle, reflection of the sound uh, principle is used here. And this is uh, uh, formed by a device which is, which is placed in the ship to find the depth of the sea. Or if there is any submarine or some, anything is there inside the sea, it can, the ship can locate it. Now we come to representation of a wave. Okay. A wave while propagating in a medium can be represented by the following two graphs. One is displacement time graph and displacement distance graph. Okay. Now displacement time graph. The variation of the displacement of a particle of the medium with time at a given position. When a wave propagates to the medium. 
see when the wave is propagating in a medium that is wave is moving on in a medium through a medium the variation of the particles of the medium with time see the particles are moving propagating so uh, when the wave is propagating the particles inside the uh, medium uh, that is uh, displacing itself okay and with time and at a given position it is moving so how it is moving the variation what is happening uh, uh, what is uh, the variation inside uh, 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 forming the dis, uh, displacement of the particles that is uh, represented by a graph and that is known as displacement time graph okay see uh, from the mean position the mean position is x1 x axis that is the mean position and the uh, particles are moving to y and then coming down to x and again it is coming down lower so this uh, uh, it is form like forming like a wave see so the a uh, the small a which is uh, the arrow which indicates the small a that is the displacement of the particle from its mean position that is uh, known as amplitude okay and in time t two crests are formed okay uh, uh, that is the time period now displacement distance graph the variation of the displacement of a particles of a medium at the different position with distance at the same time it is with distance first one was with time now it is with distance at the same time okay it is uh, it is uh, uh, represented by a graph which is known as displacement distance graph and here a is also represented by uh, uh, i mean amplitude is represented by small a and uh, this um, uh, wavelength is represented by here t but it should be a lambda okay uh, it it is wavelength is lambda okay and the time period is t okay two subsequent time between two subsequent crest and troughs that is the time period okay and the wavelength is it is represented by lambda okay so i'll stop here i continue with the rest of the question uh, this chapter uh, in my next video and uh, please go through this if you have any doubt please do let me know and uh, um, write in the comment box i hope you are liking the videos press the like button and uh, do subscribe to get the notification of my next video and also uh, it will produce me some more enthusiasm to produce some more uh, interesting videos for you and one more thing that i have started some science facts videos so i have uh, produced uh, this video one i've uh, uploaded video one, one of them okay so i'll be doing so and that will be uh, creating some in uh, interesting uh, that will create some interesting uh, facts with within you okay so thank you for uh, watching